Okay, the uh, PC board. This has been quite an adventure. There's a lot of considerations of what to and, and to not have on the board. But I think uh, between Rulecope and I, we keep going back and forth. And I think we've kind of got the best of both worlds. It's both simple and really super protected and quite versatile. So kind of excited about this. Okay, so let's start with the board itself. Here's the full schematic, and I'll post the full schematic on, uh, on Combine Forum. All right, in the middle here, you can see there's the Arduino, and whether it's UDP or just straight uh, USB, it's the same sort of thing. And where do we start? Here is that MMA, the inclinometer, and here's the A to D converter. It takes the wheel angle sensor input, and it, uh, it doesn't really need a power supply, but uh, this will have its own filtered power supply and then diode protected. If something goes wrong, all of these guys will just be on sockets and then you can just unplug them and plug a new one in. The, uh, the other thing I added and playing around on a prototype board is adding these filter capacitors into the input. Uh, the steering doesn't change that fast. So if you add a RC network, it limits the high frequency and it really quietens it down into the uh, ADD converter. I didn't really see any purpose in having a single because uh, males will just do differential for everything because then you just ground A1 and uh, it works works just as well as, as anything. So that simplifies that. This is the 3.3 version volt version of the uh, MMA. 8452. Over here on this side, you have the direction and pulse width modulated and ground requirements for the Cytron motor controller, or any of them actually. And if you want to run dual, like uh, two Cytron boards for hydraulic steering, then you just would tie the enable high. And then that's why I chose D9 and D10 because they're both pulse width modulated outputs. And so you can run two valves independently. So same wiring here as uh, whether you use a single steer motor or whether you use um, hydraulic valves. Now the other inputs, there's four inputs now and they can, of course through software, you can make them anything you want. You can have auto steer or a implement lift. You can run an external remote for auto manual button. Basically anything you want to switch and you want to change the software, you can, but they'll probably these remotes are really nice for turning on off, turning off and on auto and manual. And they are relay protected. So you can see that there's no connection between this is the outside world. This is what goes off to your buttons and switches and whatever. And the advantage of the relay is that you have perfect isolation. So if you hook them up wrong, you hook them up backwards, the most thing, most, you can't really do anything wrong. They're diode protected. And it's it's quite secure. Anytime you hook a a five volt sensitive supply that's only good for minus zero point five and five point five, you run the risk of blowing up the Arduino. So anything externally is uh, is quite well isolated now. Um, all the A lines go out through this uh, two thousand three relay driver. And so you can drive, what, what do you revive? Six different outputs. And I haven't still quite figured out what to do with the input. Maybe I'm just going to leave them all as outputs. But as you can see, we've kind of run out of lines. Could use D2 and D3 and have run all eight and then use that 2803. But, well, we'll figure that out later. But at least having six. And these are relay drivers. They can either drive relays directly or you can get those relay boards and then just connect it up to the connector and then you can drive all eight. Power coming in, you have your 12 volt battery supply through a fuse and then this is that BTS 40, it's used in automotive to uh, turn things off and on. It's quite a, a well protected little chip and you just provide a few volts in and then that turns the chip on so you'll have a remote switch which will depower and power up everything with just a low voltage switch, like a low current switch. Now when the power turns on, you have to, you have 12 volts coming here. So one will go off to a 30 amp relay, and I'll explain that in a bit. The other one will go take 12 volts off to a 12 volt to 5 volt, 10 amp 
switching module. The recommended one is, is really good. I use it. It's really super quiet. And then everything comes back to a single point ground, which is extremely important because you don't want little eddy currents and stuff creating noise through the board. You can imagine if you start, if you attach this ground to a motor and then this ground to a supply, then all the way across the board you can generate power. And that's where noise comes from. But if all the high current is all single point grounded connected, then you don't have those problems. At least you certainly minimize them. And then this is the five volts coming back in from the 12 volt to five volt converter. And that's pretty simple. Now, this is a horrible drawing, but it'll work. So here you have the, the 12 volt battery from your tractor and it comes into that switch. So that's live all the time. And here's a 30 amp relay. Rather than putting the 12 volts to 24 volts and all the high current it takes, you will just run it through a separate relay. And then remember that voltage that comes on and powers the rest of the board and powers this guy. He can turn on, this is just that normal automotive relay that we see used in combines and tractors and those five pin relays. And it can then turn on this 12 volt, 24 volt uh, converter, which will drive the motor driver pulse width modulator board like the Cytron. Hopefully we can put that right on the board. And then all we do is just have connections to it. And then that drives the motor. And again, if you want, you don't need any of this if you're going to do uh, the 12 volt hydraulic system. So then you would just have a dual pulse width modulator board. And then all you need is ground and then PWM1, PWM2, or direction and, and pulse width modulation for, for the motor controller. So again, that's all fairly simple because there's only, there's only two wires no matter how you hook it up, whether it's hydraulic or whether it's motor steering. So I'm thinking that's fairly simple. And again, all these are solid aluminum-based modules. I'll provide a picture of them, both this one and this one. They're like two inches square. So they're all heat synced on their own and sealed. So that will make a nice durable, durable package. So anyway, I think pretty much covered everything of the new board. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, this is actually kind of exciting because uh, I think it's going to work really, really well. And it'll make pretty much everyone's insulation a lot simpler and a lot more protected and durable, especially with the power supply part, being able to switch those modules off and on and having plenty of power and plenty of control, it'll, uh, it'll work pretty good.